let us get started. Have your equipment handy. If you have the ball, you're going to put the ball underneath your tailbone. If you have the oof, have a seat at the base of the oof and just have the hand weights ready for this first one. And let's start out by laying all the way back. Find that good position of the pelvis, nice and heavy on the oof or the little stability ball. The back will be nice and flat. And when you lift your leg up, you want to make sure that it doesn't pull onto the upper body. So maybe scooting down a little bit, maybe scooting up. And just kind of take a second here, find your rib cage, and just take a couple of deep breaths. I will just get a little closer so I can see everyone to make sure we're all in that good position. Lisa, your oof is working pretty well. Looks pretty good. Yeah, so, so. Lisa, yours is great. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Now let's take a little hand weights, if you have them. Notice your feet firmly press into the heel, into the big toe and the little toe. So the whole plantar fascia, the whole foot is pressing down into the floor. Breathe in through the nose. As you exhale, reach both arms towards the ceiling, holding the weights. From here, start by nodding your chin, bringing chin down towards the chest. Feel the length and the stretch in the back of the neck. And as you exhale, start reaching both arms slowly overhead. Inhale as the arms come back to the starting position. We'll do four more of these. As you're working through it, focus on the chin tuck or the chin knot. Focus on spinning your biceps in towards each other. So the palms are facing each other. Elbows are straight as the arms reach overhead. Now with the next breath, slowly return to the starting position. Three more times here. Take a breath in, arms reach over, not the chin. And exhale, coming back. The way to progress this exercise is to focus on the chin nod. So the more you nod the chin, Think of a lift in that suboccipital region at the base of the neck. And exhale, coming back. One more breath in here, breathe in. And then exhale back to center. Now let's take our hands out to the side, take a breath in. And exhale, coming back. Go four more times here. Keep going at your own pace. Mm -hmm. Inhale out and exhale in. Uh huh. Good. Good morning, Jinhee. It's afternoon for you. Yep. Um, I might not be able to do all the forward things. I have all these heart monitors strapped on me, so depending on what I have to. Okay. Just yeah. If you see just, me like doing a weird position on my stomach. <laughs> okay. So just just avoid the stomach stuff. And when we get to the stomach, I'll I'll give you some. It's, it's it's up here. So it's. Oh, okay. It's, it's yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'll go on. Mute. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you for letting me know. We're starting out on the back on the oof. Now, we're all probably done with arms out to the side. So now, let's get both hands facing towards the ceiling. And let's bring one leg up into the tabletop here. Find your balance here. So take the time. Reconnect. If this feels pretty good, stay here. If it's too unstable, lower right hand down. 
But if both arms are up and you feel pretty good, let's maintain this position. Now we're gonna move that leg and arm, opposite leg and arm move away from each other. Breathe in and exhale, coming back. So inhale out, so we only have one leg on the floor. Left leg is on the floor, and then left arm and right leg move away from each other. Only one point of contact here. So working through the hip and lumbar pelvic stability quite a bit. The slower you move, the more challenging this exercise becomes. Last one here, breathe in, move in that up position, exhale coming back, and then lower that leg down, let's switch sides. So the other leg comes up, and this might feel completely different. Find the balance, if it's too much, lower the elbow down of that side. So we have a little bit of a balance. If you're good, lift that arm up, and we're going to start moving opposite leg, opposite arm away from each other. And exhale, coming back. Inhale out. Exhale in. The second side is always more difficult because we tend to start with the easier side. Just automatically, it's kind of how our brain is wired. Two more, and in, and last one here. Now let's lower both elbows down to the floor and bring both legs into tabletop position. You can hold the weight so you can drop them. Push your elbows down into the floor. Feel the back muscles activate. Focus on abdominals, maybe a little more into the imprinted position. We're gonna start with heels together, knees open. So we're in a Pilates V, so to speak. Squeeze through the heels and just so slightly so you feel that connection. From here, we're gonna lower one leg down on that diagonal and bring it back. And exhale as we lower the other hip down, keeping that slight rotation. Inhale lower, exhale lift. And lower. And lift. Keep going at your own pace. Focus on abdominals here. So however low the leg goes, make sure that your abdominals stay connected and the back does not arch so you don't feel that pelvic tilt happening. Pelvis stays in the exact same position. Last one here. Now keep those heels together, knees open to the side. The knees will come in towards each other and then they open. So it's like a clamshell here. And open. As you open, you press into the inside of the heels. As you close, heels might move a little bit, but it's the opening part that we're focusing on pushing into the heels and activating our external rotators of the hips. Two more times here. Inhale, knees close. Exhale, open. Good, now let's stay open, pressing into the heels. We're gonna start punching one arm up towards the ceiling and bring it back. And the other. And bring it back. And again, inhale, arm lifts. Exhale, lower. Keep that inside heel connection and lower. Two more on each side, and down, and up, and down. Last one. Excellent. And lower back down. Let's straighten our arms, just press them down to the floor. Knees come together, legs are gonna lift up towards the ceiling. Now let's start with flexed ankles. So heels are reaching up to the ceiling, our feet are flexed, our tailbone is on the ball or the oof. 
the tail is pressing down as the heels are lifting up. So we feel our hamstrings lengthen here. Now I want you to point the toes as both legs lengthen away and flex the feet as legs come up. So exhale, we're painting the ceiling as the toes, toes point and we reach away. Breathe in, our feet are flexed as we reach our heels up. Two more, lift and lower here. Inhale up. And last one here. And come up. Now keep your ankles flexed. One leg is going to reach away as it points. Flex and bring it in for four. And point. And flex and lift. Two more. And lift. Keep reaching with the other heel towards the ceiling. And bring it up, switch in sides. The other leg will point and lengthen away. Flex and bring it up. These are scissors variation of mat pilates. And bring it up. By adding a slight ankle flex and point, we're taking our nerves in the lower body through a flossing strategy. So we're flossing through that sciatic nerve. If there's any tension or stickiness, you might even feel a little tingling somewhere. As long as it's not painful, that's okay. Last one here. And bring it in. We're gonna finish this with circles. So both toes will point. We're gonna open legs out to the side, circle them down and around, flex the ankles as they come back up. Inhale, open and point. Exhale, circle down, connect your heels together, reach on the long diagonal, flex the feet as they lift up. Two more, point and open, circle up, and return to the starting position. Last one here, open, point the toes, circle through, flex and lift up. Let's reverse, point away, both legs together, Externally rotate as they open up, flex and come up to that long, reaching up to the ceiling. Exhale, point. Inhale, circle up. And point away. Abdominals pull in. Circle up. You can make those circles as large as you want to, as large as it feels good on your hips today. And circle back up. Let's bend the knee. Lower one and the other, and slowly come off the oog. All right, we're gonna go through our bridge series. So the feet will be on the oog this time. Oog or arc barrel, elevated surface or foam roll is another good position. So we're gonna put the oog lengthwise. If you have a band or the ball, let's use it. I'm gonna use the band around my knees, but if you have the ball, you can also squeeze it. I just want some sort of a hip connection. And then as you lie down, both feet will find themselves on the big part of the oof. Perhaps it's the arc bear or it's the foam roll. Arms are going to press down to the floor, starting with the neutral pelvis. So there's a little Curve in the back, tailbone is nice and heavy. Our pubic bone and hip bones are in a good alignment, so they're nice and leveled. Breathe in to prepare. Exhale, we're gonna roll up. Start with abdominals, rolling through the imprint, pressing out on the band as you roll all the way up. Once you find that long position, feel the glutes, feel the hamstrings. Knees are reaching away. And make sure that your upper body doesn't get pushed up. You want to focus on pulling the heels in towards the sit bones. Exhale as we slowly roll down vertebrae by vertebrae. Back to that starting neutral position. We're going to do three more here. Breathe in. Exhale. Tuck and roll. 
Inhale, stay. And exhale as you roll down. Two more and roll up, heels press into the surface. Pull the ribs towards the pelvis. So the low back isn't working here. It's the glutes and hamstrings. Arms pressing down to the floor and slowly roll down. And the last one here, exhale, roll up. Now on this one, we're gonna hold this position. If you have the ball, you're gonna squeeze in. If you have a band, you're gonna press out. If you don't have anything, you're just gonna hold it. For 10 times, we're gonna push out against the band. And two, and three, and four, five, six, working on the endurance of our glutes here. Eight, nine, and 10, and rolling back down with control. Back to that neutral position one more time. Breathe in, exhale, rolling up. Excellent. Now, if you have the band on the ball, I want you to work on straightening one leg. If you don't have anything, you can do the same thing. It will just be more challenging. Maintaining this position, one leg will straighten and find itself back onto the ball or the oof or the arc barrel and back. So we're just doing leg extensions. The key is to maintain pelvic height and feeling work in the glutes, the hamstring, core, Okay, you know, breathing up way there and in and out and two more on each side. And last one here, almost there. And slowly roll your spine down with control. Let's grab our knees and just gently pull them towards the chest. Rock the pelvis side to side. And let's slowly come back up. All right. Now, we're gonna go into some side rotation work here. So if you have the art barrel, you're gonna sit next to the art barrel. With the oof, we're gonna put it lengthwise and the waistline will go inside the saddle. Now, kind of position the oof a little bit this way. So the big fatter part is pointing up. It's the art barrel. Your art barrel is gonna be in a short position just right next to the hip, and you're gonna slide on down into it. On the oof, your waistline is going to be on the side of it. Now, arm goes behind the head for support. And we're just gonna bend the knee the top leg and line up that knee with the hip. So the bottom knee is bent, the top knee is also bent, but you should feel this nice stretch through the IT band, kind of the lengthening part over it. If you have a weight, grab the weight. If not, that's totally fine. We're gonna breathe in and reach the top arm forward. As you exhale, lift the arm, let your head rotate all the way back, thoracic rotation. Inhale, stop with the shoulder girdle. Start slowly coming back and reach forward. So arm lifts up, head lifts up, breathe in. Exhale, rotate back. Keep your pelvis stable. Inhale, arm reaches up towards the ceiling. And exhale, we're finished in the starting position. Two more times here. Breathe in, lift. Exhale, focus on allowing your ribs to rotate back and open. You're gonna feel the oof or barrel behind you. Inhale, start bringing that arm to the starting position. And last one here. Lift. Exhale, open back. Breathing into the rib cage as you start slowly coming back and rotate into that starting position. Good. Let's take that front arm and just put it down onto the floor. Now the leg that was bent, the top leg will straighten. 
We're gonna start with the ankle flexed and heel down on the floor. And breathe in as that leg lifts up. So AB duction series. Now your arm can be on the floor in front. It could be on the hip if it helps to know where the hip is in space. But we're gonna lower and lift. Ankle is flexed. We're reaching through that heel. And we're working on our hip abductors. So that's glute medius, the posterior fibers or glute minimus. So you should feel this in the back of that hip, not in the front or along the IT band. If you feel it more in the front, just focus on pushing that heel back a little bit more. We have four more. And three. And two. And one, lift and hold. Now the foot will point. We're gonna go into circles. Back, down, forward, and up. And two, going for eight. And three, small circles, they're very concentrated. So the work is in that femur, kind of in the hip bone area almost. Six, seven, and eight, and reverse, down and back. Keep reaching for the toes. And three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Let's lower that leg down. We have last exercise here on this hip. We're gonna flex that foot again and lift it up. Now we're gonna hold it up and we're gonna rotate that femur. So toe lifts up as the knee rotates up to the ceiling and then the foot and the femur rotates down. Internal, external rotation while holding the leg up in abduction. And down. And four, very concentrated work. Five, keep reaching through the heel, six. Seven, last one, and eight, and lower that leg all the way down. From here, the leg that's down, that's in that 90 position, we're gonna rotate that leg so that heel lifts up. So it's external rotation of the hip, of the femur. The knee stays down, and we're just lifting our heel up and down. Lift and lower. And four, four more, five, six, seven, and eight. Now keep that heel down, lift your knee up and lower. And two. This isn't necessarily hard exercise. This is more capsular mobility of the hip joint. Our hip is flexed at a 90 degree angle and we're gently taking it through rotation, internal and external. And two, and one. Excellent work. Let's slowly come back all the way up and we're gonna go on to the other side. So if it's the arc barrel or the oo, take it over. The saddle, the pointy part will be towards you. The bigger part is back behind you. And I like to angle it just so slightly. If it's the arc barrel, it's just going to be in a short position. And then you're gonna lie down in the bottom knees at 90, 90. And the top leg is as well at 90 degree knee flexion, but that knee and the hip will be lined up. So you might feel more tightness through that IT band that your knee doesn't go all the way down, but your goal is to reach away and down. So there is a length moment going on there. You had a weight, grab it. We're gonna breathe in and exhale. Start lifting that arm up, rotating your chest back into rotation and extension. Breathe in there. And exhale, start pulling your shoulder in, pulling your ribs in, allowing your head, neck, and shoulders to come forward. Inhale, arm lifts up. Exhale, everything rotates back. Let the shoulder go if it feels good. If it's too much on your joint, just keep it in line with the ribs. And then breathe in as the arm comes up. 
and you rotate forward. Focus on keeping that hip lined up. Breathe in, arm lifts up. Exhale, rotate back. Inhale, coming in. And exhale, back to the center. Last one here. Breathe in. As you exhale, everything rotates back. Let your head also turn. Follow the thumb. And then breathe in as we're coming back forward. Drop the weight. Keep that hand in front of the torso or on the hip. We're going to take our top leg and lengthen it away. Starting with the foot flexed. Inhale as the heel lifts up. Exhale, lower back down for eight. Hips are stacked. Work comes from the back of the glute. And four. And five. Knees reaching nice and straight, reaching through the heel. Six, seven, and eight. Keep that leg straight, toe points. We go into circles. Eight and eight, each direction. Keep breathing through it. And four, five, six, Seven, and last one here, reversing that circle. So reach back and forward for eight, and seven, six, five, four, three, last two, and done. Leg reaches all the way down. We're gonna flex the foot, last exercise here. We're gonna lift that leg up parallel to the floor maybe a little higher, and we're going to rotate it down and up to the ceiling. So the knee, the toe, everything internally rotates and then externally rotates. And you want to feel that movement from the femur. So you feel that work in the hip joint. Halfway there. And up for five. And six. Seven. It's very deep, concentrated work. Excellent. That leg is going to lower down and stay heavy on the floor. The bottom leg that's bent at 90 degree angle, we're going to lift that heel up and lower down for eight. You'll definitely feel hamstring work here, but hopefully after a couple of reps, it starts building into the hip. So you feel it over that hip bone. It's very gentle, very light. Last two. And lift. Now we're going to reverse it. Press that heel into the floor as the knee lifts up and lowers down. Internal rotation and a deduction of the hip. Torso stays nice and straight. Whether it's over the barrel or the oob, this will be a little harder over the barrel but the torso is still side bent. So it puts pelvis in a very good and effective position to work on the hips. And last one, eight. Let's come back all the way up. Excellent. We're gonna go into this seated series, so abdominal series. So the oof or the ball will be good here. So if it's the oof, we're gonna sit at the front of it Kind of like right on the pointy part. And so we're going to start out seated. If you have the ball, use it or yoga block, something. If you don't have anything, it's totally fine too. But we're going to put something between the knees or just keep knees nicely parallel. You're sitting right at the base of it or in front of the orange or the stability ball. And as we exhale, we're going to roll back until the lower back is going to touch the ball or the oob. So we're creating a C curve with our abdominals in our abdominals in our lumbar spine. Now, once we're in that half roll back, let's plug our shoulders in. 
Tuck the chin, find that nice length through the neck. Squeeze the ball or think about magnets from the knees that are pulling them towards each other. Feet are flat, breathe in. Exhale, start with abdominals, pulling ribs forward, grounding over the pelvis, and then inhales, we'll lengthen up. We're gonna do three more. Exhale, we roll back. Inhale, we stay. Exhale, we flex forward. And inhale, we lengthen up. Two more. Roll back. Inhale, stay. Exhale, flex forward. Inhale up. Last one. Roll back. Inhale, stay. Exhale, roll forward. And lengthen up. Now let's take our hands behind our head, interlace them together. Elbows wide, but you can still see them in the peripheral vision. Exhale, roll back again. It's the ball of the oob, it's right in the mid-back area. We're gonna go into the oblique curls. Exhale, we're gonna twist to the left. So we're starting to rotate to the left, taking our right arm and reaching it to the outside of the left knee as we roll up. And then roll back down, arm goes behind the head. Four more on this side. Exhale, twist, reach that arm outside of the knee, squeeze the ball if you have it there, and then come back to the center. Exhale, twist and curl, reach the arm to the outside of the knee, and come back to center. And rotate. So you should really feel that crisscross, pulling opposite rib to the opposite of the hip, muscles, obliques working but a pelvis stays nice and stable. Last one here, and come back to center. Let's extend over the ball or the oof for a little reset. Take a breath in here, allow your chest to open. Now go into the other side. We're gonna start with nodding the chin, lifting the head, sliding our ribs down into a curl up. Breathe in, exhale. Left arm is gonna to reach to the outside of that right knee as we curl and then come back to the center. Four more. And exhale, curl up and twist. Inhale, center. And three. It's not about how high. Sometimes staying low can feel deeper. The focus is to not let your hips and the pelvis rotate, but to twist from the upper torso, from the thoracic spine. And center, last one here. And come back to center, allow your upper torso to extend over the ball. Now the legs are going to straighten. If you have something between the knees, fold it there. If not, they're nice and straight. Ankles are flexed, heels are pressing down to the floor, knees are straight. We're gonna breathe in, nod the chin, lift the head. Both arms are going to start reaching forward. As we lift up, we curl up and reach forward as far as you can. Maybe you touch your toes, maybe not. Inhale, come back up. If you have the ball, you can do this over the ball. Maureen, you can do this over the arc barrel. We're gonna go into the roll down series. Or if you have the oop, you're gonna sit right at the front of the oop. If you have something in between the knees, squeeze it, or the legs are just hip width apart. Breathe in. As we exhale, let's start curling back. So our pelvis starts to move back, then the lumbar spine, then our thoracic spine. We're doing this slow, and controlled, and then we extend over the oof. Deep breath at the top. Exhale, arms lift, not the chin, lift the head, pull the ribs in. Starts to peel yourself off, really focusing on the segmental control and articulation as you come all the way forward and lean. 
Breathe in at the top. And exhale. Start with the glutes, tipping your pelvis back, then abdominals. Focus on keeping those shoulders back and nice neck alignment. So the work is done with the abdominals as you're rolling down. Then allow your thoracic spine to extend, ribs open, head tilts back, arms reach back. Inhale, arms reach up, lift the head, pull your ribs in, roll up, and legs forward. The next two, we're going to switch arm position. So we're going to roll back, arms open out to the side now. Circle back and around, end up in the same position as we started, reaching over the head. On the way back, arms open out to the side as you nod the chin. Lift the head, pull your ribs in, roll up, and reach forward. Last one here, breathe in at the top, you're in neutral. Exhale, we roll down, arms open out to the side. Inhale, we extend into that nice thoracic extension. Arms move out to the side, lift the head, not the chin, pulling ribs in as we roll up and reach forward. Good. Get rid of the ball if you had anything there. We're still in the same position, but now the legs are gonna go just a bit wider. We're gonna take ourselves in through this saw series that we started last time. So you're sitting in the saddle of the oo, or right in front of the arc barrel. Basically you're sitting on the floor. If this is gripping in the hips, meaning like this is kind of hard to sit on my sit bones, then sit on top of the arc barrel, some sort of a foam pad or where I'm at on the oo, so that you should be able to feel like your sit bones are on the floor and you can feel them and the spine is in neutral. Arms reach forward, breathe in. We're gonna start turning to the right. As we go to the right, that right elbow is going to bend and we're going to twist to the right from the torso. Left arm just kind of follows along but the legs are not moving. They're nicely glued to the floor. Exhale, we're gonna come back to the center. Inhale, bend the elbow, twist to the left. Think of pulling the elbow back and your gaze is on the elbow. And exhale, back to the center. Again, to the right, we rotate. Now the opposite arm is reaching forward. So there is this oppositional pull back with the elbow, reach forward with the wrist and then back to center. And then we rotate to the other side, pull back with the elbow, reach forward with the wrist of the opposite hand, and back to center. Last one, side to side. Inhale, center, and exhale, rotate. Let your head rotate as well, and back to center. Now let's bring our hands out to the side, palms down. Breathe in. We're gonna rotate now again to the right, but now we're gonna reach forward to the outside of that front leg, to the pinky, to the little toe. Inhale, we come back up to the center and rotate. Breathe in, we rotate to the left. Exhale, we round forward, reach your front arm to the outside of the foot. Stay twisted as you lengthen up and come back to the center. Two more to each set. First, we rotate. Then we flex forward and reach. Inhale, lengthen up, and exhale, center. Inhale, rotate to the other side. Exhale, flex forward. Inhale, restack the spine and back to center, last one, side to side, rotate. So is a very difficult, I think, exercise, but I really like it because it integrates many different parts of the body and back to center. We rotate from our thoracic spine, we flex our head, neck, shoulders, reach on the outside of that foot, lengthen back up while you're still twisted and come back to the center. Let's bring both hands forward in front. We're gonna go into the spine, stretch forward. Not the chin, soften your ribs, exhale. 
Stretch forward, you're still on your sit bones. And then inhale, start restacking your spine, vertebrae by vertebrae, back into neutral. One more time. Nod the chin, exhale, stretch forward. And inhale, come back to neutral. Good. We're going to turn around and we're going to go into a little bit of an extension work here. So, Jinhee, if this doesn't feel, you can just stay on hands and knees, actually, and do some quadruped work. I'll show you in a second. But with the oof or with the arc barrel, Maureen, you're going to just put that arc barrel in a long position, which means the round where the hole is is going to be towards you. The oof will stay in this position. We're going to lie down on top of it. So the breastbone will go right on the big fat part of the oof. You're on the arc barrel, you're kind of centered over it. And so your breastbone will go over the front. And then the arms are just interlaced together. And we're just starting here in this prone position here. You're gonna take a couple of breaths in. Think of pressing your chest if you're on the oof into the oof. Feeling the air lifting through the back of the ribs. Now that the glutes will be active, pubic bone will press down. I like to rotate a little bit my hips. So femurs externally rotate, pubic bone pressing down. So it's a forced closure on our SI joint. Now we're nice and tight and connected here. If it's the arc barrel, your hands will be right at the edge of it. So you're gonna kind of push down into that arc barrel and lift upper body up. On the oof, our arms are by our side, pressing firmly into the palms. So we're in this nice extended position here. Now we're gonna start reaching our right arm forward, palm down, bring that right arm out to the side, back behind your low back, and then extend it back over, bring it forward and reach behind your head. So we're gonna do three more of those, just working through that shoulder, doing arm circles, reaching behind your back. So Jinhee, if it's okay, you can be here and do an exact same thing, moving through the arm, it'll just be harder. Behind your low back and then lighten the arm, rotate and reach behind your head. One more time. So just working through that scapula movement and the full rotation the range of motion on the shoulder and bring it back. Let's bring that arm down, switch your sides. Arm reaches up, palms down. Start bringing the other arm around the side, then twist it and reach as high as you can behind your lower back. Start reversing that motion, rotating through and reaching behind your head. Two more here. This can also be diagnostic for the shoulder. If you feel any pinching, whether there's any parts of this range of motion that you sort of like, oh, that doesn't feel good on my shoulder, that means that there's some sort of an issue with the centering of that humerus so or that arm bone in the socket. And that's where work on figuring out what parts of this movement sequence are either missing, shoulder joint is tight, shoulder blade usually is the key, it doesn't sit where it needs to, and then I mean back. But this can help restore that moment. Now from here, we're gonna just stay here again, hands and knees, or in this supported prone position. And I want you to nod your chin and just to look down. So the head will go down. Now keep your chin tucked as you're starting to look up but keeping the chin tuck and releasing the chin tuck at the very top. Starting with the chin nod first, then flexing your cervical spine. See one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way down. Now keeping the chin tuck, starting to lift up from C7, six, five, four, three, two, one, and releasing the head at the top. One more time. So think vertebrae by vertebrae, deliberate, an intentional movement of the neck. As we go through this flexion extension range of motion, 
and look up. Now let's knot the chin and bring our head into the neutral position. So you're looking kind of at the front of the mat here. Arms are still by your side. Your body is supported on the barrel or the oof. Or you can have a hard version, hands and knees here. From here, we're going to start turning our head. So we're looking to the left. So think long neck. Pretend as if there is like a rod. I know it doesn't sound enjoyable, but go in through your ears. And we have kind of like this dowel. And you're going to rotate around the axis of the dowel as you look to the left. So long neck, chin tuck, that cervical twist. As you rotate to the left, the left arm is going to lift up, keeping it at 90, 90 degree angle. Or if you're on hands and knees, it's just gonna lift straight. But I want to incorporate that shoulder, neck, and thoracic spine as you twist to the left. Start rotating back to the center, arm goes down and rotate to the right. Nice long neck, rotating through the axis of the dowel. Turn your head to the right, lift that arm and shoulder. Press firmly into the left arm that's on the floor to help with that twist. And back to center. Three more side to side. Inhale, rotate. Now we can go a little quicker. Exhale, center. Inhale, rotate to the other side. And exhale, center. Two more. Glutes are nice and tight, so lower body stays stable. Shoulders at 90 degree angle. And back to center. And rotate to the other side. And back to center. Notice that there's an issue keeping that shoulder at a 90, 90 degree angle as your head rotates that. And last one to the other side. And back to center. Press into the floor, push up into a little bit of a swan dive or thoracic extension. If your hands and knees, it's just the cat camel. Take a breath in and exhale. Let's press up into the shell stretch. So sit back towards your feet and allow your body to come forward. Now we're gonna go into a little bit of toe work here. So I want you to curl your toes under. Your hands and knees. See how this feels, but can you keep your toes under and start hinging your hips back to put some pressure into your foot and really feel that big toe stretch underneath the bone of fascia. The big toe extension is so vital for daily life, for walking, running, hiking. And then come back to the center. So we're gonna do just a couple of these hip hinges, pressing into that big toe, extending into it. If this feels tight already, that's just do what you can. Come back to center. If you can take it to the next level, we're gonna hinge back, start walking your hands, and helping you sit back onto your heels here. Maybe you can sit on the heels, maybe not. You can let your feet move out to the side, so nice and flat. Then from here, we're gonna shift our weight forward onto the toes, go back into that hip hinge. And last one, we're gonna shift back into the big toe Walk yourself back onto the ankles, into the deep flexion. And then we're gonna come back up into the standing position from here. Let's work a little bit on the standing work. So we're gonna take the oof and put it lengthwise. So the saddle is, doesn't matter which way it's, and it's facing, but our right knee is gonna go into the saddle of the oof. If you don't have the oof, this could be a foam roll. Or it could just be the floor, some sort of a cushion, so the knee doesn't feel the pressure through that knee gap. So in this half lunge position, we worked on a lot of these last week. We're gonna kind of build on it. From here, think of your torso nice and straight. 
We worked on that big toe, we mobilize it. We're gonna breathe in. As you exhale, we're gonna lift up. So it's a lunge variation. And then lower back down, bring your knee onto the oof. And lift up. Your torso just moves up and down here. And lower. And lift. If this is too much on the knee, which it definitely will be if you have any kind of knee, just stay in the kneeling position. But if you're able to move up and down, we'll do a couple of those. Last one here. Lift and lower. We're gonna stay down here. Both arms will reach forward and go into the genie arms. Kind of one arm over the other. Breathe in. Actually, we're gonna rotate across that bent knee. Inhale back to center. And exhale, rotate. Inhale, center. Last one as we rotate here. And come back to center. Now the next three, the knee that's down, we're gonna a little bit internally rotate that hip. So you're gonna take that foot and move it out to the side. That's all you're doing. So your femur, your hip will go in as the foot goes out. And we're gonna do two more rotations here across that hip. You might be able to go a little further, but you might feel a stretch in a different part of that hip or lose balance like I just did. And last one here. And come back to the center. Both arms go down to the floor. Tuck that foot underneath you. Straighten it. Step forward. And we're going to reverse the side. So step back with the other leg. Find that knee in the saddle of the oof. Or maybe it's the foam roll. We're starting with our lunges. So torso is right over the hip. Toe is curled under. Breathe in. Exhale. We lift up. And lower back down for four. And lift and lower. Just two more. And last one here. Stay half kneeling, genie arms. Breathe in. Exhale, rotate across that front knee, front hip. Pelvis stays nice and stable. Inhale, come back to the center. Two more times. And back to center. I like to work a lot on different rotational patterns because those tend to be the most restricted and the most prone to injuries. Now this next two, we're gonna take a back leg. We're gonna take that heel slightly out to the side and the knee is gonna be turned in. And we're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna rotate across the front knee a little bit further now, and then come back to the center. And last one here. And come back to center. Arms come forward in front of the bent knee. Tuck your toe under, press, and step back forward. We're almost done. We're going to finish with the Pilates push-up variation. So you're going to start at the front of the mat. We're going to breathe in, lift up onto the toes, find the balance, arms lift up. As you exhale, lower your heels down, lower the arms, not the chin, pull your ribs in, find the floor as you roll down, walk yourself out to a plank. Let's hold this nice plank, nice, nice long neck. From here, go into the push-up, either full push-up or a kneeling push-up, all the way down, press back up, hinge at the hips of the downward dog, walk yourself back onto the heels, find your heels, find the grounding through the heels, start rolling up using the glutes, then abdominals, all the way up, lift up onto the toes again, Find your balance here. Take a deep breath in, exhale, lower the heels, lower the arms, not the chin. 
Slowly roll down. Walk yourself out to the plank. Let's find that plank, hold it. Take a breath in. Five more seconds, keep holding the plank, nice connection. Now lower the knees or stay in the plank as we go down into the push-up. Press back up, injure the hips. Walk yourself back onto the heels. We have one more time from here. Slowly roll up. Our final one, lift up onto the big toes. Find your balance, find the height, find the length in your spine. As you exhale, lower your heels down, lower the arms. Nod the chin, soften the ribs. Step rolling down. Taking your time to find the floor. Walk out to the plank. 20 second plank hold, here we go. As you hold in the plank, focus on the glutes. Focus on pulling your ribs in. Focus on chin tuck and the length through the back of your neck. Focus on pressing down into the arms, letting your shoulder blades play apart. Five, four, three, two, and one. Push up on the knees or pull one. Press back up into the plank, hinge at the hips, come back through the downward dog, and roll all the way up. And we are done. Thank you so much. Yeah.